Hello and welcome to See Here. This week's programme comes from the city of romance, beauty and gelato. We're in Rome, Italy. Magnifico! Today's programme focuses on sign language and gesture and its importance to the deaf community. And I'll be trying out some Italian gesture myself. Later in the programme, we'll be taking a quick trip to Moray House in Scotland to revisit some groundbreaking research on British sign language that was done in the 1970s and 1980s. Last year, Italian hearing gesture hit the news when an academic study revealed that over 250 different signs were used by hearing Italians. We're here in Rome to find out more. What is gesture? This is something the Italians have finessed. It's a way of punctuating an expression by using facial and body language to really support what you're saying. Isabella Poggi, a professor of psychology from Roma Tre University, identified around 250 gestures used by hearing Italians in everyday conversation. We wanted to find out more about this and what it means for the Italian deaf community. Gestures are very important in Italian culture, more maybe than in other cultures. First, for historical reasons, because uh, we inherited the language of gestures from uh, the Greek. When the Greek moved to southern Italy and they colonized, for instance, Naples, which was made by Greeks, the use of gestures as a, as a way to communicate with, without being overheard. This was useful because uh, it, Italians were often subject of uh, uh, invasions. And the gestures continued to have a tradition of a way of communicating. As I was a young girl, uh, people would say, do not point by, by fingers because it's not polite, it's not proper. Many years ago, they considered gestures as, as a very low level culture. But then things changed. So now everybody gestures much more freely. Gesture is clearly an important part of Italian heritage and the Italian psyche. They're not unique in that aspect, as gesture is a key part of other cultures. In India, for example, or also where I'm from, Cyprus. However, I'm wondering, is Italian gesture accepted and embraced by the deaf community? Hello. Here, gestures are used as part of hearing culture. For the deaf community, do you feel that gesture is useful? Hearing Italian people communicate using spoken Italian. When meeting a deaf person, there are many options for communication, such as speech, the use of gestures to aid communication, and if they can cope with that, there is always pen and paper. There are a variety of methods. However, for deaf people, we do not communicate using these gestures. We converse using sign language. So it's like having two languages. 
With hearing people, we can be flexible by using gesture. I don't see gesture as a limited form of communication, as it can actually help the understanding of what is being said. It depends on the situation, but most of the time it can be used to help. For example, on TV when they are talking and use a bit of gesture, it helps the viewer to follow what's been said. It's the same with hearing people who gesture. The gestures amplify what they are saying. Hearing and deaf people can communicate and gesture help. It isn't LIS, but you can have a conversation to a certain extent. It helps when hearing people can use gesture, but if they don't feel able, then we can write things down. However, if the hearing community knew LIS, that would be brilliant. Gestures are okay. So, second best. It's not a difficult form of communication. Regardless of any limitations, it must be useful living in a society that is so open to body language and gesture. I'm keen to find out more about the culture of Italian gesture. We spoke with Luca Vulo, a Sicilian filmmaker with a personal interest in Italian gesture. Luca made the documentary, The Voice of the Body, looking at gesture within Sicily. Take a look. When you are in Italy, you need to go on the street, in the market, in the square, and just watch the faces, the hands, and the body of the people. I think you can mm, experience the beautiful show for free. And you can understand the no easy code of no verbal communication is a language, it's no easy. I think the Italian people are more uh, physical because it's in our blood, in our society where we mm, grow up. For the British it's different. The British uh, don't take the gesture in, in, inside the culture. We wanted to know more from an academic point of view. Just how marked are the differences between LIS and Italian gesture? Does the sense of cultural pride when using Italian gesture also cross over to the deaf community? We met Barbara Panacchi, a technical and linguistic assistant from the Language and Communication Across Modalities Lab, or LACAM. Gestures used by hearing people are almost always accompanying speech. Like this. You wouldn't have gestures without speech. Instead, in sign language... Hold on, it is a bit complicated. Let me give you an example. We might find certain gestures in LIS. To be specific, this sign which stands for Y... It is also used by hearing people as a gesture, but it is dependent on the spoken word perché. Therefore, in an Italian spoken language sentence, a gesture can exist in isolation. Vice versa, in sign language, the gesture has an integral grammatical function. To give you a different example, the sign indicating to eat is used by hearing people as a gesture to emphasize the spoken word. Deaf people instead will use a variety of different signs and expressions to demonstrate the food they're eating and how it is eaten. Following the grammatical rules of sign language, the sign can be modified and changed into different forms. In the case of gestures, they are limited, fixed and used sporadically in a sentence. They are dependent on and secondary to the spoken word. I hope I am clear. 
Sadly, sign language doesn't seem to have the same cultural status as hearing gesture in Italy. In May 2011, protests were held worldwide outside the Italian embassies. This was because a new bill was going through the Italian parliament, meaning that LIS was effectively defined as LMG, Linguaggio Mimico Gestuale, a language of minds and gestures. The deaf community was up in arms and I was there to witness it. Hello there. Do you mind me asking why you're here? I'm here because my partner is Italian and we've been together for 17 years. Every year we've been going to Italy and meeting lots of friends out there who have no recognition of their sign language. This means they get low paid work and have a low quality of life, amongst other things, which is awful. Now LMG has popped up and lives will be going downhill, so we're here to protest against it. The legal recognition of sign languages has always been one of the major concerns of the international deaf community. The attempt of the Italian government in May 2011 to pass the bill through Parliament, which would classify LIS as a language of mimes and gestures, didn't get very far as the Italian government changed hands and the new Parliament has yet to address the issue. The fight for legal recognition continues. If LIS was changed to LMG, this would create problems. In schools, for example, it would have an impact on communication support, interpreters would be gone. The life of the community, our language, would disappear. Having a language of gesture would create so many barriers by becoming LMG, a language of gesture. The linguistic value of LIS would disappear. LIS is not a language of gesture. We need to stay strong as a community. If LMG was approved, it would mean it essentially becomes a monkey language. My deaf identity, my communication would become restricted. Hearing people would see us as stupid and laugh at us. It wouldn't be seen as a proper form of communication. They would think less of us. It's important that sign language gets legal status from the Italian government. Italian citizens are granted specific rights. Different languages are given official status. Twelve minority languages have been given official status. But LIS has been ignored. It's important this goes on the list as a language. If this were to happen, it means access to communication and information. It means we could access life, work, school, university, medical access and other elements. It means we could fully participate in life and in society. There are clearly some strong feelings within the Italian deaf community, and rightfully so. What does the Italian community think of this? The government must to uh, officialize the language of, yes, because the list is language. And it's very strange for our country, for the, the gestural people don't have an official language for the deaf people. It's incredible because I, uh, I don't understand why. The problem of having Italian sign language acknowledged as a language by the Italian Parliament, I think that uh, it should really be so because it is now clear that uh, Italian sign language is a language. But the problem is that uh, Italian Parliament has many, many other things to think about. So I don't know when it will happen. We contacted Pietro Grasso, the President of the Senate, to ask what the Italian government is planning to do about acknowledging LIS. To date, we have still had no response. 
LIS is a language, and as there are many other and different languages across the world, it deserves the same respect because it carries the same value. Additionally, LIS is a distinctive language in the way that it is visual and fascinating, and it is my language. Well, excuse me, if we have to respect other languages, I would equally expect mine to be respected too. Since LIS is part of who I am, and if I am to be respected 100%, you should also respect my language. When the time is right, and when the strategy is right, we'll open up the door to make changes. Time will make the change. One person can't make the change. We need to target Parliament and look at other options. LIS having legal recognition in Italy would be amazing. It would transform everyone's lives. Life would be so much better and it's important that this happens. Much like the UK, the battle for complete legal recognition of sign language continues. Based on the passion I've seen, I wouldn't be surprised it happened for them, and we wish them the very best of luck. Now, from the sunny climates of Rome, we head to Scotland to look at the groundbreaking work done at Moray House in Edinburgh. In the 1970s and 80s, they carried out research into British Sign Language that gave it a status and value that it previously didn't have. In the 1970s and early 80s, the use of sign language was banned in most schools. Hello, Carl. Hello, Bungie. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Good. A Horizon documentary in 1981 expressed the views of the day. These boys are suffering from an invisible handicap. They're all profoundly deaf, most of them since birth. They're condemned to be outcasts in a world they can see but cannot hear, communicating with each other through their own private language, a visual language called sign. Most parents are afraid to let their children learn sign language. It brands them as dumb in more senses than one. Even the deaf sometimes forbid their children to use it. The same Horizon programme went on to look at a research project being undertaken at Moray House in Edinburgh. It was one of the first times BSL was seen on a mainstream television programme. Now linguist Mary Brennan and a handful of other researchers are giving name and status to British Sign Language, or BSL. Working with her, Martin Colville, born hearing to deaf parents, BSL was his first language, and Lillian Lawson, herself profoundly deaf from birth. It was a really enjoyable time, very exciting time. It was new and the deaf community wasn't aware of BSL, British Sign Language. They knew about signing and what they used but thought BSL was a new language. We had to work hard to explain it was the same, only that we were giving it a label. Inspiration for the project came when Martin recorded some conversations with his deaf father in 1976. He'd sign, wait, 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 wait. All these different signs. And when I was voicing for Mary, wait, for all these signs, she'd say, hang on, he's used different hand shapes. These signs were all different. It was then I had a light bulb moment and I realised that there was a difference and that I just hadn't noticed before. It's hard to believe that a manual language could be as rich as English. But BSL can have shades of meaning and they're finding new signs all the time. I think actually looking at BSL one is constantly amazed by the richness of the vocabulary we're constantly seeing signs which we translate with the same English word and yet we know that they have a slightly different function. An obvious one is the sign pretend. Now, I'm saying the sign pretend, I really should say the word pretend because you can have pretend made with this hand shape on the nose. And then there's another pretend also made at the nose where you use a slightly different hand shape, the middle finger touching the nose 
and moving outwards. And that means pretend, but in the sense of deceiving or being really rather unpleasant. The team also discovered signs which did not have a direct English translation. That was most interesting. Not only were there signs, but proper facial expressions, and the whole body was involved. That's why different parts of signs became known as multi-channel signs. This was the new terminology that transpired from our research. Mary was determined to ensure that we actually appointed deaf researchers. The big change was simply that back in those days we had deaf people helping but as unpaid volunteers. We said this isn't right. It's important to make sure these deaf researchers have equal status with both of us. Maureen, I think you discovered as I did that when you watch BSL you find that it's an extremely rich and complex language. And that's something we never realised before. As part of my many roles, I looked at videos. Mary was theory and linguistics, but I didn't have that knowledge. I was looking at it from the deaf perspective, understanding sign language. So that meant I'd watch the signing and write down a sort of BSL English glossary. I think it's very important for deaf people to have the opportunity to get together and discuss their own language. Mary would say, why do they puff their cheeks out? Why do they do that? I'd say that I hadn't really thought about it and didn't know. She'd ask why their eyes move from left to right and I'd just say, that's the deaf way and it was okay. Mary would just laugh and explain linguistic elements and the formulation of language used by deaf people. That's when I realised that I was actually using BSL, but hadn't been aware of it. It was a revelation about handshapes, placement and body language. I was astounded. In the same year as the Horizon programme, British Sign Language returned to our television screens. BBC producers had spotted Martin Colville in the documentary and he became the first presenter of a brand new series. In the programme we will be using signing, sign language, subtitles and voice. Producers also spotted another talent on the tapes who went on to become the face of See Here for many years to come. And we filmed Clive telling a joke about a member of the Hells Angels. A Hells Angel with a peak on his helmet, a spike on his helmet, chains across his body, big cow horn handlebars, stubble on his chin, saliva dribbling down his face, cigarette hanging out the corner of his mouth, screeched to a halt. The man sort of hesitated and the, the hell's angel said Do you want to lift and get on the back and he said no no anyway he accepted and got on the back and the bike did a wheelie off and roared down the road it has facial expression in a new way it had uh, beautiful clear signing it had location it had turn taking roll shifting all the rules that we were trying to learn about uh, bsl were there in that one story Sadly, Dr. Mary Brennan died in 2005, but the work that she did will never be forgotten. I think uh, the greatest um, honour I can give Mary in my own way is to say, before I started the research, my mother, who was profoundly deaf, but had gone deaf at eight and had English, always said to me, your father's not very bright, he can't read and write. And inevitably that had an impact on me as an individual. And by the time I finished the research, I realised that my father was brighter than my mother. 
Unfortunately, the original building where the research took place has been demolished. I wish I could go into the room again and show you where I sat. I'm really surprised they've demolished it. I'm gutted, such a shame. However, important research involving deaf and hearing people is still coming out of Moray House, which is now part of the University of Edinburgh. The findings from the research work undertaken by Mary and her team led to many changes in the deaf community, especially in the world of education. Their dedicated work has led us to be rightly proud of the rich and complex language of BSL. Seems like we owe a huge debt to the work of Dr Brennan and her colleagues. Now, the See Here team have issued me with a challenge. Based on all that I've learnt during my time in Rome, I've been ordered to get out there and do some Italian gesture of my own. Is gesture going to be good enough to get by here? Will it be easier to communicate here than it is in England? I've been given some tips. Want to know what they are? Have a look. Now, I've got my shopping list to get some presents for my wife, the two kids, and something for myself. Let's go. Communication's going well. It's pretty easy using gestures. <laughs> gestures are marvellous. Come here and how much have been really useful. Italian market culture is marvellous. The communication has been really smooth. It's embarrassing having to communicate through pen and paper, so usually I just walk off and go to the supermarket. This is amazing. England is different. People don't tend to use facial expressions, but they do here. It's great. I'm looking forward to cooking these. It's been a wonderful day and I've met some fascinating people. And more importantly, I hope you have enjoyed watching the programme. Arrivederci. I'm off.